Welcome to my channel. We're going to value three stocks and look at their financial ratios. The first company is Applied Materials. It supplies equipment, services, and software to assist in the manufacturing of semiconductor chips, which are used in electronics, computers, smartphones, TVs, and solar products. This company has a market cap of $55.6 billion, so they're a large cap company. They're trading a little over $61 a share. And to get the shares outstanding, it's the market cap divided by the stock price gives us the shares outstanding, 904 million. We're gonna need this number later because we're gonna calculate the value of the company. Let's look at their financials, free cash flow. This is how you value a company. You estimate the future free cash flows, then you discount that number back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. Free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. If you have positive free cash flow, that means you're generating more cash than you're spending. And they have a pretty sizable free cash flow each year, two to three billion dollars. So that's a pretty nice number and it's fairly consistent. Net income is the profit and loss on the income statement. Net income is an accounting number, so it can be manipulated using accounting tricks. But they have pretty consistent and nice net income each year. Their revenue also is pretty solid. It goes from 10 billion up to 17 billion, so it's a pretty good growth from 2016 to 2018, but it did drop in 2019. But 14 billion is still a pretty big number. Let's look at a capital structure so we know what discount rate to apply to the future cash flows. They have $5.3 billion of debt, and they pay 4.5% interest on the debt, and the cost of debt is 3.7%. To get the cost of debt, it's the interest rate times 1 minus the effective tax rate. So they have 39% of debt in their capital structure. I like to see below 50%, so that's a good number, which means 61% is equity. To get the cost of equity, we need the beta. That's how volatile the stock is relative to the market. The market as a whole has a beta of 1. They have a beta of 1.31, so the stock is a little more volatile than the market. The cost of equity, we use a capital asset pricing model to figure that out, and that's 12.38%. And the WAC is 9%. That's a blend of the cost of debt and cost of equity. And that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows, and those estimations are based off of the prior financial information. We also estimate a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year for, that's 61 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital, and we get a value of the company of $56 billion. We divide that number by 904 million shares, and we get a calculated stock price of $63. They're trading at 61. So they're trading at what I consider their intrinsic value. Let's see what Simply Wall Street says. They're at $66, so we're all in the same range. Let's see where the stock has been trading. So it looks like it's been kind of up and down, but it's at a pretty good point, a pretty high point at least right now. Let's look at their financial ratios. A weak PE, a decent price of sales, and a weak price to book. PE is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. They have a PE of 20.5. I like to see below 15. So investors are paying about $21 for $1 of earnings. Price to sales is stock price over sales per share. To get sales per share, that's revenue over shares outstanding. They're at 3.8. I like to see below 2.5. So investors are paying $3.80 for $1 of revenue. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. To get book value per share, that's equity over shares outstanding. I like to see below 3.5, they're at 6.8. So investors are paying about $7 for $1 book value. They have a good current ratio, a good interest coverage ratio, and a really good ROE. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities, so they can easily cover their current debts and payables. ROE is net income over equity so they can provide a good return to the equity holders. I like to see above 20%. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense, so they can easily cover the interest payments. I like to see above 
And this is the only company I did in the semiconductor equipment and materials industry. So I can't compare them to anyone else. The second company we're going to look at is Teradata. This company is a provider of database and analytics related software, products, and services. They're a mid cap company. Their market cap is 2.4 billion. They're trading at $23 a share. So their free cash flow is positive each year, but it's declining. And usually declining cash is not a good thing, but it's not necessarily a bad thing if you're using that cash to grow your business and that money you're investing is going to make you more money in the future, that could be a good thing. You want to look into these things, of course, before you invest. Their net income, which is the profit of the business, is a little bumpy. It's positive, negative, positive, negative. And as I said earlier, net income is an accounting measure, so it can be manipulated with accounting tricks. Revenue is declining pretty much each year, so that's not usually a good sign when investing in a company. Their total debt is $479 million. They pay 5.5% interest on the debt, and their cost of debt is 3%. They're a bit leveraged at 65% debt in their capital structure. Their equity is 35%, so their beta is a little over 1, so it's not too volatile the stock. And their WAC is 5.5%, which is a blend of the cost of debt and cost of equity. And that's the discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimate a terminal value of $3 billion. That's all cash flows past year four. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $3.1 billion. We divide that by 106 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price of $29. They're trading at $23, so they're trading at a 23% discount. So it's a buy according to the model. Simply Wall Street has them at $41. So they're saying it's even more undervalued. Let's see where the stock has been trading at. So it looks like it's undervalued because it's been driven down the price so much. I wonder why. Coronavirus has really affected this company. So it could be a really good value. Let's look at the financial ratios. Negative PE, great price of sales, and a weak price to book. PE is stock price over earnings per share. They have negative net income, so they have negative PE. Price of sales is stock price over sales per share. I like to see below 2.5, they're at 1.3. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. I like to see below 3.5, they're at 9.2. They have a good current ratio, a really weak interest coverage ratio, and a really weak ROE. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities, so they can cover their current liabilities. ROE is net income over equity. They have negative net income, so they have negative ROE. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense. That's 10 million over 26 million, 0.4. So they cannot cover their interest expense. EBIT is your operating income. It's how much money you make before paying interest and taxes. So it's just how much you make on your regular operational business. So on a regular business, they can't even cover their interest payment. This could be a timing thing and possibly next year they get this fixed, but this is a little concerning. The best way to look at ratios to compare them to similar companies, I've done videos on Accenture, Broadridge, Fleet Corps, IBM, Scientific Applications, Wipro, and Xerox, all in the same industry as Teradata. If they have a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they're in green, they're better than the average. So they're worse than everything except price to sales ratio. They're a lot better than the average of 2.6. But getting a lot of sales is kind of meaningless if you can't convert it to earnings. You have to eventually convert it to profit at some point. I can give you an example of a company that could get trillions of dollars in sales but have negative profit. I could sell $100 bills for $90. I'll get all the sales I want in the world, but I have negative earnings because I would never make money. The third and final company is Sienna. This is the world's largest player in optical connectivity. It's a telecommunications equipment and service supplier. Its customers include AT&T, Sprint, Verizon, and many more. They're a mid-cap company, 6.9 billion market cap. They're trading at $45 a share. Their free cash flow looks pretty good. It's at its highest number in 2019. Their net income is a bit all over the place. They had a negative number in 2018, but they did have positive free cash flow, which was good. And their sales are growing each year. This is what you want to see when you invest in a company. They have $687 million of debt. They pay 5.5% interest on the debt. And the cost of debt is 4.4%. The cost of equity is 9.2%. 
and we figure that out by using the beta. That's how volatile a stock is relative to the market. And the beta 0.9 means the stock is a little less volatile than the market, which is a good thing. The WAC is 8%, which is a blend of the cost of debt and cost of equity, and that's the discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. So we estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four, that's 7.1 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $6.6 .6 billion. We divide that by 151 million shares. We get a calculated stock price of $44. They're trading at $45, so they're trading just about what I calculate. Let's see what Simply Wall Street says. They're at $58, so they seem to always be a little higher than me. Let's look at their stock price over the past few years. So it looks like the stock is trading at an all-time high. Let's look at the financial ratios. They have a weak PE, good price to sales, and good price to book. PE is stock price of earnings per share. I like to see below 15, they're at 27. Price to sales is stock price over sales per share. I like to see below 2.5, they're at 1.9. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. I like to see below 3.5, they're at 3.2. Good current ratio, good interest card ratio, and weak ROE. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities, so they can easily cover their current liabilities. ROE is net income over equity. I like to see above 20%, they're at 12%. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense, so they can easily cover their interest payments. The best way to look at ratios is to compare them to similar companies. I've done videos on Saragon, Cisco, and HP, all in the same industry as Sienna. Now, if Sienna has a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they're in green, they're better than the average. So in terms of PE, they're better than the average, but they are worse in price to sales and price to book. Even though I did say they have good price to sales and price to book numbers, I was comparing it to the market as a whole. You should always compare it against similar companies. Their current ratio is the highest of the four companies. Their ROE is a bit low, but it's about average. Their debt is a little better than average of 24%, average is 30%. And the average company is $55 billion because Cisco is so big. They're at $6.9 billion. Let me know what you think of the video. Leave a comment. I'll definitely answer. If you want to see me value more companies, then subscribe. Thanks for watching.